So let's jump right in. So I'm going to start off talking just a little bit about um, some general information about Griffith before we get on into uh, information about the law programs. So you may not know, um, Griffith is a fairly young university. It was actually founded in the 1970s, but already it is a university that is ranked highly globally. So you can see from the slide there, we're actually ranked in the top 2% um, of universities in the world. And we're also ranked as one of the top 50 universities under the age of 50. So yeah, pretty good, pretty good for a pretty young university. Um, the great thing I think about Griffith is that we really kind of marry um, a real kind of emphasis on research with an emphasis on teaching. So um, you'll see a lot of the professors at Griffith are still very much um, involved in research in their areas and still very much engaged with industry um, in their particular fields. Um, but again, teaching is still very important to us as well. Um, and this is important for whether you're coming to Griffith as an undergrad or a graduate student. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. A couple of other things that are important for you to know about Griffith. Um, one of the big kind of cornerstone programs of Griffith is actually environmental science. And so Griffith is very big on sustainability. Um, we're also, as I mentioned before, also very industry focused. So employability is um, a really key component of all of our degrees at Griffith. So we have a lot of um, work integrated learning opportunities for students inside um, all of the programs at Griffith so that you're really getting prepared for the workplace before you get anywhere near um, graduation. So a quick overview um, in terms of Griffith and its numbers. So we do have five physical campuses and one um, digital campus. And so we have about 50,000 students at Griffith, um, which to a lot of students sounds like quite a lot. But when you think about the fact that those student numbers are split across five physical campuses, one digital campus, um, it's not quite so overwhelming. So we'll talk a little bit about the campuses and their numbers in a moment. Um, but yeah, so 50,000 students, just under 20% of our students are international um, and they come from about 130 different nationalities. We have over 200,000 graduates um, from Griffith and over 200 different kinds of uh, degree programs as well. So for those of you who are not familiar with Australian geography or you may not have been down um, to where Griffith is located, we are in the state of Queensland over here uh, on the right hand side of the map. And so you'll notice that um, there are two cities highlighted here. So Brisbane is the capital of the state of Queensland um, and it's got about two and a half million people. And then an hour away is the Gold Coast. So the Gold Coast is a smaller city. It's about 600,000 people. Um, and yeah, a really short either um, bus, train or car drive um, from Brisbane. So we actually have um, most of our campuses located in Brisbane. So the Nathan campus, the Mount Gravatt campus, South Bank um, and Logan are all located in Brisbane. And then the Gold Coast campus, um, obviously at the Gold Coast. Um, the Gold Coast campus has actually fairly recently become our biggest campus. Um, so before we were talking about 50,000 students overall at Griffith, we have about 18,000 um, at the Gold Coast. Um, the second biggest campus, which did used to be the biggest and the main campus, is Nathan. So the Nathan campus in Brisbane has about 13,000 students now. Um, Mount Gravatt and South Bank, Logan are all quite small campuses in comparison, but they all have their different um, specialties, I guess you would say. So Nathan and Gold Coast are very similar to each other in that they have um, the widest variety of programs. So you'll find everything, um, Nathan in particular has everything kind of from um, aviation, business, um, science, right through to some of the health sciences as well. Um, Gold Coast is pretty similar. Gold Coast has even more of a focus on health science. Um, and it also has um, some of the creative arts as well. 
Malcravat is very focused on um, education and criminology, and the South Bank campus is very much the creative arts um, hub. So you'll see the Queensland College of Art is there, Griffith Film School and the Music Conservatorium as well. So life in Queensland, whether you're at the Gold Coast or in Brisbane, is pretty good. Um, we are very lucky to get over 300 days of sunshine per year um, in Queensland. Um, in terms of weather, you can see there looking at the average temperatures, there is really no such thing um, as winter in southeast Queensland, certainly nothing um, that a Canadian would need to worry about at all. Um, so we talked about the population before. I think these ones are slightly out of date. So as I was saying, Brisbane's more around two and a half million now um, and Gold Coast is closer to 600,000. Um, I should also mention Gold Coast is quite a tourism hub as well. So you will get a lot of people coming um, from different countries and other states in Australia as well throughout the year. All of our campuses are based um, on public transport lines. So we're lucky in that respect. Um, so if you're at the Gold Coast, you're probably going to be taking the G-Link tram um, or a bus. If you're at the Nathan campus um, in Brisbane, you'll probably be taking bus. Um, if you're downtown at the South Bank campus in Brisbane, you'd be taking pretty much anything, including a ferry. So lots and lots of different transport options. So just to give you an idea um, of where our campuses are in relation to the city. So if you're coming to the Gold Coast campus, um, which is definitely one of the options for you with law, you'll notice Surface Paradise here in the background. So Surface Paradise is usually, if anybody's heard of the Gold Coast, it's normally Surface Paradise. That's kind of um, the biggest kind of shopping area, um, you know, eating, nightlife, all that kind of stuff. So if you were to take the tram, let's say you were living in Surface Paradise and you were coming out to our campus at Southport, if you were taking the tram, it would take you about 20 minutes by tram. Um, so super duper convenient um, to get out here to the, the Gold Coast campus. And as you can see, it's a beautiful, beautiful lifestyle. Um, so even when you're not right on the beach, um, there's actually a river um, that runs through the Gold Coast as well. So you can be walking along canals and yeah, it's really beautiful, even if you're not right by the ocean. And so this is um, just a bit of an aerial view of the downtown area of Brisbane. So for students who would be at the South Bank campus over here, um, they would be very close to the downtown core of Brisbane, even if you were um, studying at the Nathan campus, which is one of the, the options for law, you could totally live downtown here and just take the bus um, out to the campus. And here is Nathan campus. So Nathan and Mount Cravat campuses are both located in a national park which is pretty cool. And you can see that here, um, lots and lots of greenery around all of those buildings. So yeah, it is a really beautiful campus. And this is a campus where you will definitely come across some wildlife. So um, if you're interested in seeing koalas and wombats and things like that, it is entirely possible. And this is downtown Brisbane. So this is right near our South Bank campus. We don't um, obviously have a beach in Brisbane, but we do have a man-made beach um, at South Bank. So I mentioned that we have um, over 200 degree options for you at Griffith. Um, so this just gives you a brief rundown of all the different areas. Obviously today we're focusing on law um, but I should also mention that if you were coming in from high school um, with the Bachelor of Laws program, you can actually take a dual degree. So if you wanted to do law arts, law business, law environmental science, something like that, you can actually combine those um, degrees. And again, employability, as I mentioned, we do have a big focus on, um, you know, 
really tapping into what industry is looking for, making sure that our graduates do come out um, of their program with all the skills and knowledge that employers are actually looking for. Um, as I mentioned, there is a lot of work integrated learning opportunities for students um, in any program at Griffith. Um, but there are lots of other opportunities for students as well. There are lots of leadership programs, um, mentoring opportunities, and so on. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, we do actually run on a trimester system at Griffith. Um, so similar to other Australian universities, we do run on a normal calendar year. So our trimester one, or semester one for other universities normally begins in February, March, um, and we just kind of run through the year in that way. So I'll show you an example. So yeah, so let's look at the upcoming trimester, trimester two. So for this year, trimester two um, basically runs from June if you take into account orientation. So June through to October, if you're doing trimester three, you would go October through to February, and then trimester one next year would be February to June. So depending on your program, um, you may have three different intake options. Um, so every program, almost every program at Griffith, except for a couple of health sciences, will offer a trimester one and trimester two intake, um, but many programs also do offer trimester three as an option. So let's talk about Griffiths Law School. Um, so great things I can say straight off the bat, it is Australia's leading law school. Um, so according to the Shanghai World Rankings, Griffith Law School is ranked number one in Australia and number 29 globally. Um, to put that into a Canadian context, number 29 is around about where um, U of T is, so it's kind of in that same sort of um, territory. So give you to give you some context there, it is um, definitely a great law school. Um, I think there are a couple of things that are particularly special about um, Griffiths Law School. It is very um, practical kind of focused, it's very hands-on. The law school is extremely student focused. Um, I can't stress this enough. Like you won't come across a professor that you'll have trouble, um, you know, talking to, being able to get access to. Um, the Dean of Law, you know, will do activities with you, will check in um, on you to see how you're going with your program. Um, it's a really, really supportive um, environment. Um, and we hear that, you know, not just from students in general in the program, um, but I often check in with the Canadian students to see you know, how they're feeling, and that is um, the feedback that comes from them. So, you know, not only, you know, ranked number one program in Australia, but an incredibly, you know, supportive um, group of people that you'd be going to school with. Um, and yeah, just the level of accessibility um, to people like the Dean, um, the Deputy Head of School, um, all of those people, they're just happy to, to meet with you and help to support you get to get through the program in any way. So Griffith, um, Griffith's program is probably a little bit different to some of the other programs that you'll find um, at different law schools. It's really built on a foundation um, with two components, social justice um, and also a global outlook. So even one of the first courses um, that you would normally take in your program is actually um, focused on global law. So they really want you to look at law systems around the world um, and really understand the Australian and Canadian law systems in that kind of context. Um, the other thing is social justice. And you'll find this again with the, you know, basis of environmental kind of sustainability. Social justice is also a big foundation of Griffith. Um, and that certainly extends into the law program for sure. Um, so they really encourage students to kind of think really critically about the law and whether it's, um, you know, serving people, how is it being used as an instrument for social justice? So yeah, really interesting and really challenging um, in terms of programming. So these are just some of the courses um, that you would be, 
you know, have access to. Um, there's a big focus on international, as you'll see there, international environmental law, international human rights law. Um, some of our professors um, are experts in these areas. So we have um, one professor who she was actually due to deliver a course um, at The Hague this year, obviously with COVID-19 that's been delayed, um, but she will be doing that next year. Um, we have another um, professor who's very well known um, in, again, in that kind of social justice area. She does a lot of work with um, policy around, you know, defining modern slavery. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of interesting people. We, our professors really come from all different backgrounds. Um, yeah, our dean um, comes from a corporate law background, you know, other um, professors are very much into the environmental law side of things. So yeah, people from all different backgrounds and you'll see that um, obviously reflected in the courses. So I'm going to show you a little video now just to so you can hear from some of the Canadian students who are currently studying. I love living on the Gold Coast. The beach is beautiful and I've always had a fascination with Australia. It's been really rewarding. It's the best decision I've ever made. I get to experience a laid-back lifestyle while also studying the thing that I love the most, which is law. When I was looking at where to study, I really wanted to go to a university that offered both Canadian and Australian content. Griffith was highly recommended. I could study in Australia while still getting a Canadian education from Canadian teachers. My professors are always willing and eager to help. I had lots of questions about everything. The head of the law school was willing to take their time out of their day to answer my questions. It made me excited. It made me really excited to go to Griffith. Right from week one, we welcome our students to the legal profession. We tell them that they are now legal professionals in training. When students study the Canadian law subjects, they'll find themselves in a very small cohort being taught by Canadian trained academics and lawyers. Our lecturers really care about our students. We really care about the student experience. You'll find the lecturers here very approachable and you'll get a lot of support here at Griffith Law School. I get to study what I love in a country that's amazing. It's probably the experience of a lifetime. It's just a great lifestyle and it's definitely nice to escape the winter for a few years. Okay. Oh, I should just mention that if um, you're having trouble seeing the slides that I'm talking about um, after the video, just make sure to refresh your screen. Okay. So why study at Griffith? Why choose Griffith um, as a program? First of all, I mean, we've talked about the ranking, obviously. Um, our graduates have a really high degree of success. Um, so employability is actually above the national average um, for Griffith Law graduates. We do have a really broad um, range of practical legal clinics. So as I said, like work integrated learning is a real part of every Griffith um, program. So you might work on things like the Innocence Project. So um, working with people who have been wrongly um, convicted. You might be able to work on the Refugee Law and Policy Clinic. Um, helping refugees, there's lots and lots of different options for you in terms of clinics, just depending on your particular interest and where you want to get the most experience. So we have very competitive pricing at Griffith as well, particularly considering that we are the number one law program in Australia. Um, so if you're looking at the Bachelor of Laws program, um, you're looking at 29,500 um, per year. Now that's Australian dollars, but remember the Australian and Canadian dollar um, are usually fairly similar, pretty much on par. Um, the Australian dollar is actually weak against the Canadian at the, at the moment. So that's a good thing for you. Um, and then the JD, you're looking at about 36 and a half thousand for the year. Now I should mention when I talk about the year, I am talking about two trimesters. So at Griffith, you would be doing 40 credit points or four courses per trimester. If you are fast tracking your JD, you would be doing three trimesters. So just take that into account. 
36,500 would be for two trimesters. So you'd have to add on a bit more for the third trimester. Um, but it all works out the same. I mean, you're still paying the same amount of money. You're just doing the degree in two years instead of three. Um, there are a lot of opportunities as well when you're studying at Griffith to compete in um, mooting competitions. Um, you can go on exchange as well. So if you want to get some experience outside of Australia, um, that's an option as well. Now, we do have Canadian courses, law courses that we have available. So if you're taking the Canadian stream um, of the JD program, for example, you will be doing these courses as your electives. Um, so basically, these are the courses that we teach if you want to prepare yourself for the NCA exams that you'll have to take um, in order to come back and practice law in Canada. You don't have to take these courses if you don't want to. You don't have to do the Canadian stream. Um, sometimes students choose to take some of these courses and then study for the rest of the NCA exams by themselves. Some students take none of these courses um, because they're interested in taking other you know, law clinics or other electives that they're interested in. So it's up to you. You don't have to take the Canadian stream just because you're Canadian, um, but it is an option there. Um, what's great about this is you'll be preparing for the NCA exams while getting credit towards your degree. So you don't take these as extra classes. Um, there's no extra cost. This is all built into your program at Griffith. Yes, so as I, I mentioned there, um, you will have to undertake the NCA um, accreditation exams as part of coming back to Canada with your law degree. Um, but yeah, if you take those NCA exams, you'll be able to practice in Canada in addition to practicing in Australia. So we have um, a lot of graduates at Griffith who um, have definitely gone into leadership positions for sure. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, some of our graduates um, in a moment. But yeah, we have people all over the place. We have people obviously working in top tier law firms, um, both in Australia and um, internationally. You know, we have people doing pro bono work, people in um, community legal centres. Um, some people have, have taken their law degree and are going and doing things um, like consulting or working in, you know, kind of the corporate world, um, areas where, you know, law is very useful, but they're not necessarily um, practising as a lawyer as such. So really interesting, interesting work that the graduates are doing. And here are some of our um, alumni here. So again, you can see Jessica there is a, a novelist. So something that she probably didn't expect that she would do um, with her law degree. Um, but you'll see Kate here. Kate Van Doer is actually one of um, the professors that would teach you at Griffith. Um, and she is the one who does a lot of work on um, modern slavery policy. So really interesting. Um, she's really interesting to follow on Twitter if you're interested, if you're on Twitter at all. Um, yeah, she's always doing something really cool. Yeah, and we have um, obviously lots of politicians um, who've graduated from Griffith Law as well, to be expected, I guess. And Kara Cook, I'll show you a little video from Kara in a moment, but um, yeah, she was in 2014, she was um, the Australian Young Lawyer of the Year. And Lauren there on the right was actually um, Griffith's first Rhodes Scholar. So pretty impressive. So let's have a look at the video of Kara and just talking about her experience. My name is Kara Cook. I'm the current Australian Young Lawyer of the Year, the Principal Solicitor at Women's Legal Service and a Griffith Law graduate. My role here as Principal Solicitor is to supervise the advice of our solicitors who are here in the building, as well as our panel of 100 volunteer lawyers who come in here each week and provide assistance to over 3,200 women each year. A typical day for me 
involves clients, obviously, um, assisting with them with their family law and domestic violence matters, but also advancing the needs of the service. So in terms of stakeholder engagement, talking with government, talking with other community organisations about the work that we do and trying to get the name of Women's Legal Service out there so that we can access more clients and help those who are most in need. After I finished my Griffith Law degree, I undertook my practical legal training with Griffith and did that for the first year afterwards. And uh, at the same time, I was working as a judge's associate in the district court. And then I went into private practice and worked exclusively in family law. And during that time, from when I was at Griffith until I was in private practice, I actually volunteered with Women's Legal Service. And then once I finished in private practice, I came and worked here as an employee. So it was a wonderful connection to the, to the sector. I had a really good experience at Griffith, very supportive environment, all the lecturers knew my name. I always had an interest in access to justice issues and specifically issues affecting women. But then when I went to Griffith and the opportunities that I was presented with when I was there, I think that fostered and developed my interest in those areas and particularly in justice issues. And then when I graduated, I was able to go out into the world and pursue those interests with some sense of real world experience that I'd already obtained during my studies. The Australian Young Lawyer of the Year is an award that is presented to young lawyers each year, or a young lawyer each year and a young lawyer organisation as well, um, to recognise excellence in the profession and service to the community. So in the last year I was awarded that award and it recognises the work that I have done um, in this sector but I think it's great recognition for all young lawyers who work in community legal organisations. I love my role, I love my job, I love being able to provide women with the experience of having access to justice. When I think about my career I'm looking for something that makes a difference in the world. It's not just a job, it's not just a paycheck at the end of the day. It's knowing that you are making a difference and feeling rewarded every day and happy to come to work every day because you are making that change in the world. Okay, so let's talk about um, the two different program options that you have um, at Griffith. So if you're coming directly from high school, uh, which you can do in Australia for a law degree, you don't have to have an undergraduate degree. If you're coming straight from high school, you'd be taking the Bachelor of Laws program. That's a four year program. Um, you can accelerate it a little bit. So if you wanted to finish in three years, you could potentially do that working on our trimester system, um, but most students would go through it in four years. Um, again, as I mentioned before, you can take it as part of a dual degree. So if you were doing the Bachelor of Laws plus, let's say, Bachelor of Business or Bachelor of Environmental Science, it would take you one extra year to complete two degrees. So five years in total for a dual degree. Um, the Bachelor of Laws can be taken at both the Gold Coast and the Nathan campus uh, in Brisbane. Um, and again, intake, as I mentioned before, um, for most programs at Griffith, you can do a trimester one or trimester two intake. So if you're starting in trimester one, it'll be a February start or trimester two will be a July start. In terms of entry requirements, if you're coming um, from high school, you're looking at about a 76% average across your year 12 um, courses. Obviously in Ontario, we'd be looking at your best six courses. With the other provinces, we'll be looking at all of your final year um, results for that. Sometimes students are a little surprised that um, the GPA requirement isn't higher for law. Um, this is simply because basically we don't have any quota places um, for international students at law uh, at Griffith. So that means that we can take as many um, law students who want to study with us um, for that program. So we're very lucky um, in that respect. So we don't, without the quota on international places, we don't have to drive the GPA um, super high. Now, the other option for those of you who already have an undergraduate degree, you can come into the JD program, the Juris Doctor. So this is our graduate entry program um, as I mentioned before, it is a two-year accelerated program. 
Um, it's essentially a three year program that's been accelerated using our trimester system. So you would do three trimesters a year to finish in two years. Um, again, you can take this either at the Gold Coast um, or at Nathan. Um, I think at the moment, most of our students, most of our Canadians would be on the Gold Coast. Um, they've actually formed a um, uh, Canadian Law Society there as well. So, and there's just a lot more Canadians in general doing all kinds of programs at the Gold Coast. Um, some do go to Nathan, of course, um, but I would say at the moment, Gold Coast is still the most popular option. Um, for our Canadian students. Now the JD does have an extra intake, so you can start in either February, July or October um, for that JD program. And again, the entry requirements aren't super duper crazy. Um, you do need obviously to have completed a non-law degree um, and your minimum GPA needs to be around 70%. Um, obviously, you know, to be competitive, the higher the better. Um, one of the best pieces of news for you with this program is that you do not require um, an LSAT score. So we don't care about standardised testing at all um, in regards to law. So it's just purely based on GPA. No interview, no LSAT, nothing else. And this just it gives you an idea of what um, the program layout would look like if you were taking um, the JD and you wanted to take the Canadian stream. So with the JD, you can either just take a general JD. Um, so then you get to pick, you know, electives from all over the place um, and from different areas of law that you're interested in. Or you can take the Canadian stream, which is laid out here. So it shows you um, some of your elective courses will be things like Canadian criminal law, um, Canadian administrative law, and so on. So that's the Canadian stream. You can also take um, the international law stream as well. So again, an even bigger focus um, on the international and global perspectives that we talked about before. Now, I should mention, um, we talked a little bit, obviously, about finance before in terms of tuition costs. Um, the thing to remember, um, I guess, with the finance is that it's really generally a puzzle um, for most of our Canadian students. So, um, you know, usually people come with some of their own savings. Maybe they got um, some help from their family. You can also bring your provincial loans. Um, so uh, I know, BC and Alberta are very um, generous with what they'll give students um, to help them with their study uh, overseas. Um, Ontario, of course, you can apply for the international version of OSAP. So all of those um, can certainly help with your tuition fees. Um, you are also eligible to bring um, Canadian bank loans and lines of credit. Um, the big Canadian banks are very familiar with funding students to study in Australia. Um, so that's definitely an option. And of course, you should apply for all scholarships. Um, generally, our Canadian students are pretty competitive in terms of getting scholarships at Griffith. Um, you guys usually come in with a good, um, solid GPA. So you're definitely contenders um, for those scholarships. So definitely apply for everything you can. So you'll see the link down here. If you go onto that website, um, you can actually search the scholarships by nationality, by study area and by program level. Uh, so there will be different scholarships available to students coming in um, for undergraduate programs versus our graduate programs. Um, but yeah, lots of opportunities. So law students um, can always apply for a $5,000 scholarship to help with their first year's tuition. But you can apply for other scholarships on top of that. So um, there's a postgrad scholarship um, for international students. I think that's about 25% off your tuition fees. You can apply for the Remarkable Scholarships. They're a 50% tuition discount. Um, yeah, there's all different scholarships. So again, use that link and then um, use the um, filters on there to search the different options for you. Um, but yeah, definitely lots of scholarships and I really encourage you to apply for everything that you're eligible for. Um, so in terms of what you can expect after law school. Um, there are a few options for you. Um, 
in terms of the NCA exams, we talked about um, to come back and, and obviously practice in Canada. You can either take those at the Gold Coast. We actually do have an NCA testing centre at the Gold Coast. So you can even take those before you come back to Canada. Um, if you want to do that, like if you've taken the Canadian stream and you want to do it while the information is fresh in your mind, you can do that. Or you can just wait and come back to Canada. That's fine. Um, the other option is that if you do at least a two year um, program in Australia, you do have the opportunity to apply for a post study work permit. So basically at, at any city in Australia, you can apply for a two year post study work permit. If you study at the Gold Coast, you're actually be eligible for a three year post study work permit. So that gives you an opportunity if you would like to do your articles in Australia before coming back to Canada, that's one option. Um, but yeah, the process is pretty straightforward for law in terms of coming back to Canada from Australia. Um, so you'll see down the bottom here, obviously you have to do your NCA exam. So you'll submit an application to the NCA and they will basically tell you how many exams they think you need to take um, based on the courses that you've studied. Um, this is totally different for everybody. It's very much an individual assessment process. So um, it's really hard to guarantee you exactly how many exams you'll have to do. Normally with our um, Griffith program, most students will come back and just do the basic five. Um, and those are the ones that relate specifically to the Canadian law electives um, in our program. Um, occasionally, if a student hasn't got an undergraduate degree, so if they're doing a Bachelor of Laws, they might have to do a couple more um, exams, but yeah, it's really up to the NCA's discretion um, when they're looking at anybody's individual application. So NCA exams, um, then obviously you'll be looking at articling. Again, you could do that in Australia or you can come back to Canada. Um, you can also look at Ryerson's law practice program. So that's um, a bit of an alternative um, to art articling. So that's one option. Um, then basically you'll take um, your barrister and solicitor exam and then you'll be called to the bar and then you're officially a lawyer. So that's in broad strokes, um, those are the steps that you would take. So that pretty much brings me to the end um, of, of today's presentation. Of course, if you want to get in touch with me um, anytime, you can feel free to email me here. Um, you can phone me uh, or text me on that number. I'm also often on Skype um, and I'm also on Instagram. Um, so you can follow me there. Um, I'm also running a bunch of Zoom drop-in sessions um, through April and May. Um, so if you want me to give you information on what the dates and times are for those, um, just let me know. But yeah, basically you can just drop in. So you don't have to book an appointment with me. You can just, you see the date, you know I'm going to be online at a certain time um, and just use the link and yeah, come and have a chat, ask your questions, um, whatever you, you want to know. But of course, in terms of the application um, process, I mean, if you're on this webinar, you're obviously already in touch with KOM. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to work with the team at KOM to um, apply for, for law at Griffith um, or any other program you're interested in. They streamline the process, they make it a lot easier. Um, we've been working with them for a really long time, so they're really familiar with all of Griffith's um, requirements and processes, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely get in touch with, with KOM staff. Um, Thank you all so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming to, to listen to everything I have to say about Laura Griffith. Um, again, if you have any questions, um, please use one of those communication methods to get in touch or reach out to KOM, um, the staff there. You know, we work really closely together so they could definitely answer your questions as well. So have a great day, everybody, and um, we'll catch you next time. Bye.